Welcome to my video review of Manjaro Linux E17 version 0.8.7.1. That's a lot of version numbers there. But Manjaro Linux is based on Arch, but it's not the whole command line difficult to use version of Arch. They've actually made it very simplified. And that most of it is via the GUI, and you don't have to edit loads of config files just to get the thing going. No, out of the box, this is pretty much how it looks like. I've done a few little tweaks here and there, but nothing great. And you've also got a GUI package manager. So yeah, it's... I'm not going to say perfectly easy to use, but ideal for someone who has perhaps used a Linux distro before and would like to try something different. Now this is the community build of E17. So what we've got is a very lightweight desktop that has a lot of fancy effects. Now I do like E17, and I think at one point in the future it's maybe my desktop of choice, but not right now. So Manjaro Linux is a rolling release distro, so you could in theory install it now, and several years time you could still have exactly the same system but fully up to date and patched. E17 is exceptionally lightweight, and I've clocked this distro of booting up in 5 seconds in VirtualBox. Yes, 5 seconds. But on real hardware, I would predict that could be as low as 2 or 3 seconds. <laughs> that is fast! And the memory usage, it's pretty low. It's around 200 meg of RAM in use. Oh yeah. It's good for old machines, it's good for new machines as well, because you've got a lot of uh, nice effects here. But anyway, let's take more of a look at it. So the layout of the desktop, we've got the clock and weather widgets over there on the right hand side. On the top we've got uh, application launcher with just a few applications on there, as well as the shutdown menu and CPU usage. On the bottom we've got another launcher as well as showing for desktops, network configuration and sound configuration. If you move the mouse to the right or left hand side, you move over a desktop. That's Quite a nice feature there on a full system install, but didn't have to drive me mad while I was testing it in VirtualBox. Now there's two different menus you can have for the application launcher in E17. You can either have the traditional, what would you say, Windows type, where you've just got the list of applications there, or you can have this Run Everything launcher. Now I just added the Run Everything to the taskbar at the bottom. In fact, let's just access it up the top here. So left clicking on desktop also brings up a menu here. So just go to run everything and it's kind of like how you would treat the Unity launcher in that you could just type in a letter at the beginning of the application. So calc for instance, C A L C. And there we go. I could just do all that via the keyboard. Although I haven't found a way of binding the run everything launcher to the Windows or Super Key, which is a bit annoying. So it seems pretty responsive on opening applications there. It has the Funar file manager there, as well as, I think, oh, where is it hidden? Um, there is another, there is an E17 file manager as well. Let me just see if I can find that, because that's quite a nice file manager. A bit more fancy than the E17 one is. Ah, there it is, Enlightenment file manager. The icons are a little bit big here though. I'm sure there is a way of customizing that. There's many customizations you can do here. Ah, I know what I'm not seeing there. There's no shortcut there for the network folders. It's a bit strange. Because there is a shortcut for the network folders in Funar, and it's actually pretty responsive at navigating the network. So now I can get on my NAS, which is reading this via SMB. So yeah, that's running perfectly fine here. The codecs are pre-installed. Well, kind of pre-installed there because you've got VLC, but as you may have seen there when on, on the intro I showed that Flash Player was working within Firefox. It does have the non-free codecs on there. So there's a few different themes pre-installed on here, although I haven't been uh, too interested in any of these themes. Pretty similar to what I had. Oh, it's a light colour. Um, okay. No, these don't really do it for me. Now I could have a look to see if there are more available via the package manager, but this will expose one of the bugs on the system, in that you can't access the package manager via the GUI. If I go to add remove software, it says Enlightenment was unable to run the application, PAMAC manager, application failed to start. Yes, that's a little bit annoying isn't it? 
the way around that, and if you open up terminal, type in sudo pa mac manager, we've got a couple of updates to do. So just say OK and it will get on and do those. Yeah, cool, that's pretty easy to do. That's oh, uh, OK then, uh, I'll let you do that. What? I thought I had a load of updates to do earlier like this. Oh, I'll go and get on with it then. Just trying to demo something in the video, but there we go. What is it doing here? It's configuring the Pac-Man mirror list. Why did I have to do that? I thought I did this earlier. Directory permissions, uh, okay, another error there. So it's a little bit concerning if you don't know what all those errors are, but, but I'm not that interested in those error messages. What I was gonna say is, have a look at what themes are on here. So does it have any sort of specific E17 themes? And to be honest, I'm not noticing that many. Again, I'm sorry to go comparing it too much to Bode Linux, but the two are fairly similar. You've got a lightweight Ubuntu-based E17 distro, and we've got a lightweight Arch-based distro. So I'm not seeing much in the way of themes. Given the choice there, I probably would be choosing Bode Linux. Just looking at here, it's pretty easy to search through the application list. Um, I'm just typing in sort of names and or types of applications I'm after. So I could go and install one here, Handbrake. That's sometimes a difficult one to get hold of. It's not always included in many Linux distros. But let's have a look. Has that installed Handbrake successfully? So I'll go and do the Run Everything Launcher. Handbrake. Ooh, that's pretty easy. But what the hell is it doing at the side there? Okay. It seems to be vibrating a bit when you minimise the window. So there's definitely some glitches in E17 there. Very weird. And finally, let's have a look at the applications we have pre-installed. So we've got about XFCE. Well, I know the, well, that's a bit odd, but I know the file manager is XFCE based. So really nothing too interesting there in the accessories. Under development, we have an elementary, we have elementary test as well as a Q, few Qt4 applications. Under graphics, we have document viewer and GIMP. Internet, Avahai SSH server browser, and Avahai VNC server browser. Firefox for web browser, Thunderbird for email, transmission for the BitTorrent client. Under multimedia, we have Audacious for the music player, a handbrake I just installed, a VLC for the media player and XFBurn. Office, we have just partial suite of LibreOffice with just Calc and Writer. And under settings, you just got the configuration of E17. So really, there is quite a lot you can do to this system. And this is what I thought of, Manjaro Linux E17. So yes, it's fast, lightweight, and fancy looking. And it's a rolling release distro, and an easier to use version of Arch. On the downsides though, it doesn't have as many themes and profiles as likes of Bode Linux does, which is also E17. However, if you've ever used Bode Linux, it's, that's actually more difficult to get going, because out of the box, it has, well, hardly anything next to nothing on there. So out of the box, Manjaro E17 is actually more ready to use. Kind of a tough choice there. I'll probably take Bode Linux because you customize that a lot more. And another issue there I had was a lot of segmentation faults. This error happened quite a few times, but every time it happened, the error message would just come up and you could just recover and it, there was really no effect. It's not doing it so much now, I've got into using the system a lot more, but certainly while I was tweaking it and getting it going, that error was there quite a lot. But overall, I've given it 85%. So thanks for watching, see you later.